Imagine standing at the edge of reality, just one step away from a world where all your deepest desires come to life. Behind this door lies everything you've ever dreamed of, an entirely customizable world, all at your command. Want to live out the ultimate adventure of a lifetime with the powers of your favorite superhero? You can do it. Want to go on a date with your favorite celebrity crush? You can do that too. Whatever fantasy, morally good or bad, your brain is capable of conjuring up, you can live it out in this dream world. But of course, you haven't stepped inside yet. The choice is yours. Will you step through the door and enter the Matrix? This is the philosophical conundrum we will all find ourselves facing soon, as the development of VR and AI technology continues to progress. So what is the current state of AI and VR technology? And how far away are we from creating the Matrix? And is creating the Matrix really the best path forward for humanity? Well, AI researcher Roman V. Yampolinsky seems to think so. In fact, he thinks that the creation of the Matrix is the only path forward to ensure the safety of all humanity. Let's explore why. In his paper, Personal Universes, Yampolisky discusses why it will be so hard to create an AI that serves all of humanity equally, while ensuring the safety and personal freedoms of all people. If we really try to do this, we must follow this three-step plan. How to align super intelligent AI. Step one, understand the values of each individual person on Earth. Step two, combine the data from all these values together to form a value set which would be acceptable to all people. Step three, train a super intelligent AI with this value set so that it may be beneficial to all of humanity. Wow, to find out the intricate values of every person on Earth, that's gonna be one massive survey to send out to everybody. Luckily, we have the internet, where people already share their opinions on the state of the world every day. The internet also has a huge backlog of information containing all the literature and philosophical ideas of all humanity, going back to the ancient Sumerians and the Code of Hammurabi. So we could train this super intelligent AI on this data, but Dr. Yampoliski suggests we go a step further. If we want AI to be as truthfully aligned to our values as possible, perhaps we can use an evolution of our current brain scanning technology to read an individual's minds and directly extract the morals and values that each person holds. This will be done using technologies like opto and sano genetics. He admits in the paper that we currently don't have a framework in place for something like this to work, but assuming the proper information can be extracted, we move on to step two. Step two might seem easy at first. Put all these values together and figure out where they overlap, like a giant Venn diagram of sorts. Unfortunately, it's much more complicated than that, since not only would an AI have to find common ground between all 8.2 billion of us humans, it also would have to consider the lives of all sentient beings on Earth. Additionally, since this AI would be governing the future of our planet, it would have to take into consideration the values of all future beings on Earth as well. Philosophers call this the hard problem of value alignment. Even for a super intelligent AI, it's impossible to find common ground amongst such a diverse cast of beings. So what if we just decided to ditch the idea altogether? Instead of trying to create an AI experience that's one size fit all, what if we just gave everyone their own AI companion and universe? one which perfectly aligns to their values and desires. This would give everyone the freedom to be themselves without infringing on the rights of other sentient beings. Enter Individual Simulated Universes, ISUs. Yampoliski describes these ISUs exactly as you might imagine. It is an entirely simulated world that once entered will be indistinguishable from base reality. We are already creating incredibly realistic simulated environments, both for research and entertainment purposes. Look no further than Unreal Engine 5. What started as a program to create video game environments for first-person shooters has quickly turned into the leading 3D environment simulator. People are already creating massive open worlds 
with no coding experience. Simply enter in a prompt and the program will use AI to automatically generate a world for you. Soon, with technologies such as Neuralink, these worlds will be created automatically with our thoughts. Instead of trying to find the exact words needed to describe what you're imagining and typing them into the prompt, technologies such as Neuralink will allow you to think it and it will be created. But these worlds still only exist within our computer screens. How will advancements in VR technology allow us to further immerse ourselves into these simulated worlds? Well, the ideal goal is to hijack all five of our senses to get a full spectrum experience. With currently available VR technology, we are only able to hijack the audio and visual senses. This is of course done through a VR headset and some headphones. We are still in very early stages of VR technology. Real advancements in VR will be made soon as we are able to directly stimulate the neurons in our brain instead of sending information the old-fashioned way through our eyes and ears. One advancement in VR technology that doesn't get talked about enough that I also find really interesting is something called galvanic vestibular stimulation. This is a type of stimulation that affects your balance. Electrodes placed precisely outside your ears are able to interact with your vestibular system to make you feel like you are falling to one side or the other. A YouTuber named Mean Gene Hacks made a little project out of this and the results are pretty funny. I recommend you check out his video, link down below. It also gets a lot of use in flying simulators, as pilots are able to acclimate themselves to the disorienting illusions sometimes experienced during flight. All in all, we are rapidly improving our abilities to take control of the neurological senses sent to our brain, which controls our perception of the world. And if you'd even like to try out some neuroscience for yourself, a website I found called Backyard Brains provides step-by-step -step guides and resources for you to conduct your own mind control experiments at home. As we edge closer to the possibility of creating a virtual world indistinguishable from our own, it's crucial to pause and ask, should we even be immersing ourselves in these worlds? What effect will living your entire life inside of a computer have on your sense of self and identity? Knowing that all your interactions and achievements in life have been with virtual people and made-up challenges may bring about a new wave of existentialism and nihilism for humanity. Finally, if we spend most of our time inside of a virtual world that has no perceived difference than the real world, will we even want to come back? And the scariest part of all of this is the question, do you want to enter the matrix? really isn't so black and white, or red and blue for the Matrix fans out there. It's not a matter of, yes, I want to enter the Matrix, or no, I want to live in the real world. We are dealing with something more similar to the story of the boiling frog, which states that a frog put into boiling hot water will immediately jump out. However, a frog placed into room temperature water that then gets slowly heated over time will be boiled alive and never even realize the temperature is changing. Our use of technology has slowly been accelerating since the beginning of agriculture and the specialization of jobs within society. Over the past 6,000 years, technology has allowed us to live ever more comfortable lives with each invention we create. Much like the boiling frog, we are shaping our own realities all in the name of pleasure and progress. Currently, the world is dealing with a massive epidemic of phone addiction and brain rot. Our phones are optimized to be as addicting as possible. Social media and other entertainment giants use the same techniques as casinos to keep you hooked and always coming back for more. And all of this is the tip of the iceberg when compared to the economic and societal pressures to keep up with the latest technology. Good luck finding a job and keeping up a consistent social life if you're not up to date with the latest technological literacy. Much like the boiling frog, these changes to society leave us with no choice but to accept them and move forward.
Thanks for watching everyone. Let me know what you think about the future of VR and AI technology. Are you excited to one day immerse yourself in your own Matrix-esque universe? I am both excited and nervous for the future of these technologies. I'm excited because I think it's going to teach us a lot about our own consciousness and it's going to deepen our understanding of how our consciousness currently simulates our base reality. Uh, I also think it's going to give us a lot of opportunities to do things that maybe we wouldn't have been able to do without a virtual reality experience, such as maybe someone doesn't have the financial means to see another part of the world, or maybe they are disabled in some way, so then they can experience what it's like to do different physical activities. If, let's say, you're in a wheelchair, maybe the, the matrix will allow you to run or play a sport or go skiing or swim, something, something fun like that. However, of course, it is going to be dangerous because with infinite potential, you have infinite potential for addiction. And a lot of people are going to be trying to escape uh, the reality of their lives with the virtual world of these simulated matrices. Of course, if you want to learn more about how the technology works, you can go ahead and check out my mind control video. I'll have it linked here and also in the description. Just look for it. It'll be there. Thanks again for all the support. I really appreciate it. And I love you guys. I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.